and welcome to the podcast. I'm Marisa. I'm actually recording this time. <laughs> and we're the Chromemaster Sisters. <laughs> As a reminder, this podcast is rated T for Teen for strong language and mature themes. If you don't like that, um, I don't have an alternative for, like, and honestly, we're not going to talk about Nancy Drew today anyways, so. No. Like, if you're not here for the potty mouths and you're, there is no Nancy Drew, like, why are you here? Honestly. Are you stalking us? <laughs> That's so nice of you. <laughs> I make that joke, but I've no, literally yeah. been stalked yeah. and it has left me incredibly traumatized. <laughs> so, sister, <laughs> what are we talking about today? <laughs> uh, <laughs> today, we're going to be talking about something you guys may not know that we like. Because I don't know if we've <laughs> ever mentioned it before. <laughs> It's a little show called Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. Well, <laughs> totally. Um, so, one of those weird lesser things known is our fandoms. <laughs> yeah, totally. Uh, but we're doing our second ever Curlmeister Sisters Watch, where we're going to talk about something that, or maybe like Curlmeister Sister Talks. I don't know. I feel like because, we like, have... maybe some of these will be like reading. I don't know. No, There's a I lot think, of things yeah. we love a lot like we could talk about the circle of magic books ariana at some point we need to talk about the tamora pierce circle of magic oh my god yes we're talking about tamora pierce we're talking about flavia de yes uh, Yes. i i recognize that one i said was a a a writer and the other i said was a character but it's fine what the fuck ever man (laughs) but this time we're going to be talking about Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, specifically Brotherhood, because I'm not going to lie to you, I never finished watching the original series. Ariana did. I don't know if she remembers it. It was weird. Guys, I don't recommend it. Like, it's a trip. Uh, So instead, we're talking about Brotherhood, which is from 2010, I think. That sounds right. It's like 2010, 2011. I don't remember. I don't have Wikipedia up in front of me right now, and for some reason, that is just escaping me. So, the main difference between the two, to start with, is that the original 2003 anime was running concurrent with the manga. Um, And it got to a point where the manga was not updating enough, so the show took its own trajectory. It was the original Game of Thrones. It just kind of did, uh, it, yeah, it really didn't know what it was doing, and it was very interesting. Yeah. However, the second one, so Brotherhood, is now after the manga has completely finished, so we know what is going to happen in the end, um, and We have at least a general idea of where people will be, and we're not going to invent characters out of fucking nowhere- who the fuck is Dante? What is this shit? Sorry. I went back to full... Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, it's okay. So we're going to talk about Brotherhood because it's a much better show. <laughs> Let's just put it out there. It's just better. It is um, so much in better. In quality and in content. Mm-hmm. Um, but Full Metal Alchemist is an anime based... Uh, Brotherhood is an anime based on a manga. What is this about? I like your um, description. I said it's two boys try and play God and it costs them everything except for their will to continue to defy God and to fight him. <laughs> That's that is pretty much what it is. That so is it. And uh, the show is about Edward Elric and his little brother Alphonse Elric and what we first meet them and Ed is a 15-year-old state alchemist. Um, So he worked for the military as an alchemist, which is, like, basically superpowers. Like, to be real with you. It's just superpowers. He is a child. He is 15. He got certified at 12. Mm -hmm. Uh, He was the youngest ever state alchemist. Like, this is, like, a military position. It's, like... It's like if the military had designated superheroes. Yeah, I believe they say they, they say his his um his rank is that of a lieutenant. Um, I don't remember. No, above. Yeah, what is it? Fuck. 
They I say, don't remember. They say in the show, but I don't pay I enough attention, apparently. I think it's major. I don't know. I don't know. I honestly don't know. Because I remember... Hmm. Anyway. He's pretty high up. He's, he's pretty he's, high up in the military like a, a for a 15-year-old. Um, and we meet him and his little brother, who is, we assume, wearing a big suit of armor. And it is revealed that his brother is the suit of armor. <gasps> uh, yeah, pretty... That That's like first episode we're mm-hmm. talking about. And... Because Ed they really like to reveal to you throughout the entirety of the show. Um, yeah. Like, Alphonse's helmet comes off with such frequency that it is comical, even when yeah. it shouldn't be. So, like, you kind of laugh, but then you gasp. Yeah. Because, so, you know, maybe there's something in there you didn't want to see. Um, Not getting into spoilers. Yeah. But, um... Gosh. So we then find out that Ed is also missing an arm and a leg, and he has prosthetics, which in this universe are called, it's auto mail. And auto so mail is basically, the coolest fucking thing, and I hope we get it. Yeah, so it's basically like a prosthetic that is attached to the nerves, and you can kind of feel it, and you can move it with your brain and everything, and it's like... They can have, like, weapons instead. Like, one character has a chainsaw. Mm -hmm. Uh, Another character has, like, um, uses, like, a a flame. uh, No, like, the, her knees become, like. Yeah, become uh, rocket, or, yeah. Yeah, yeah, a rocket launcher. Projectile launcher. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Uh, One of them does. The other one becomes, like, a machine gun. Was that it? Or was it a knife? Anyway, we should explain, um... Full Metal Alchemist takes place in an alternate universe of Earth, basically. Um, kind of. None of the like, countries are actually named the same. No, exactly. Uh, and the geography is not the same, everything however. Everything got changed. Like, it would have been like Earth, except if Earth had um, decided to... The split happened, there we go, uh, when... Um, our Earth went this with science, and mm-hmm. their Earth went with alchemy. Um, yeah, because like they talk about Nicholas Flamel, <laughs> they reference Nicholas Flamel yes. at one point. So like, it's weird. So technically, so basically, it takes place in nineteen seventeen. Yes, nineteen seventeen. Um, because um, they keep the years the same. They keep all yes. of the stat stuff the same. Yeah, so it's, um, it, huh. No, yeah, they, so it takes it's place in the country of, uh, it's, yeah, it takes place in the country of Amestria, but Amestria is the, an, is anal, analogous with, Amestris. um, what? Amestris. Oh, okay, Amestris, uh, is, is, uh, basically Germany. Um, yeah. Um, and there even are, down to, like. Yeah. yeah, like like it's yeah, basically right down Germany, to but some... also it's like Germany, but also England, but also America. Yeah, um, it's a whole thing, and then to the north you have um, Russia, basically Russia. <laughs> I don't remember called. what they're called. It starts with a K sound. Yeah. Uh, oh, I can't remember. And then... Well, because movies. nobody gives a shit about them. Because, like, only the people yeah. in the North give a shit about them. Everybody else is like, I don't know. Fuck it. It's the uh, but North. The, and to the East, they have Xing, which is basically China, across a big desert, which is, you know, um, Xerxes, which Xerxes, obviously yeah. then is very based in Persian. Yes. Like... <sighs> And yet very not. It's a whole Middle thing. Middle Eastern, but also weirdly, like, Egyptian. It's... Yeah, uh, it's interesting. Yeah. Um, I dig it. I really... Yeah, I it's mean, really cool. I, um, but Xerxes no longer exists. Yeah. Um, it's just ruins out in the desert. Yeah. So... Anyway. Ed and Al are Amestrians. Um... They are young, and they are trying to find the secret to Philosopher's Stone. So that's pretty much the entire series is, like, kind of about finding a Philosopher's Stone. 
uh, which is like if you I don't know if you've ever heard of it before. Somehow you've never heard about Harry Potter for right. any for one thing. Um, so there are certain taboos within uh, alchemy, which are things like it has to be uh, equivalent exchange, trading one thing for another of exactly the same like composition, basically. Um, so if you're going to make something out of wood, you have to first use wood kind of a thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. You can't make something out of nothing. A lot of it is bring people back from the dead. Yeah. (laughs) Um, those are the two, like human transmutation is the biggest taboo. Uh, it's like illegal basically. Um, kind of basic, like not quite legal. Like, I like, Hmm. I, I don't know if it's technically illegal, but it's a taboo, and you're not supposed yeah, to do it's, it. Yeah, it's just a taboo. It's not illegal. Um, I mean... But it should be. Should be. <laughs> it, it definitely should be. But it's one of those, be. we don't know that it's a thing that can really be done. Yeah, so philosopher's stones can actually bypass these, like, laws of alchemy. You can create something out of nothing if you use a philosopher's stone. You can perform human trans- transmutation, like fixing people's bodies so use it for healing and stuff like that you can do that um which there are technically reasons that that is possible but i'm not going to go into it because i don't want to go into what the philosopher's stone really is um so that's their their thing they're trying to find a way to find a philosopher's stone so that they can get their original bodies back alphonse has not always been a suit of armor he is actually a sweet 14 year old boy yeah and um, Dundee lost his body. He sure did. He lost his body huh? to the truth. He, yep, he sure did at the age of 10. It's just... That is a fun, like, just a... statement to put out there. Yep. Yeah. He lost his body to the truth, you know? Yep. And it is factually correct. And I'm not spoiling anything. Nope. This so, is a hard one to talk about without spoilers because yeah. so much of what's great about this show is the world how it, and the plot, yeah. how it all, everything interweaves with one another. Nothing it, is ever what you originally thought it was, and it all completely builds on the last on the last part. Mm-hmm. Like it's it's a cumulative plot, if that makes any sense. Yeah, it's it is a build up. It, it is, is a great it's watch, guys. I so highly fantastic. Recommend. Um, but then the other uh, thing about it. Wait, I lost where I was going. Completely. And the ca- the characters are are yeah. Like like let's let's go over some of our our uh, just inherently main character. It's a it is a very nice unso- ensemble cast, which it is really is a rarity in in anime, especially like yeah. It's like yes, Ed and Al are the main characters. However, they do like maybe a quarter of what is done in the show. Yeah, like really, like some episodes barely I mean, even follow is, them. Like it is centralized around them, but it, it goes out. And their radius is just like yeah. So basically, the show is from them just uh, trying to. It's a domino effect. So the beginning of the show is they are trying to find their. A philosopher's stone to get their bodies back and at the very end it has grown to be something that involves the entire country and the entire world and several different militaries and stuff like that so it goes from such a small thing to yeah. meaning more and more and more um just ugh. yeah and why do we like it because it's it, it because of that it is, because it's it is. skillfully written and, and, like, okay, we, we've talked a lot about the story. And, like, that is honestly the most important part of it because it is phenomenal. It is well-written and just well-structured. But yeah. the the voice work is so, so sincere. And in both. Both the <laughs> yes. dub and the sub. Most like of the, the original. them are the same voices. Um. As no, no, I meant from the dub and the sub, not the original and the 
No, no. So I'm I, saying the Japanese voices versus the. Okay, I didn't. Uh, I didn't listen English to the rest voices. of it. I thought you were gonna say, in both. No. Versions. So in the uh, Japanese and in the English is yes. what I'm trying to say. Yes, understood. If I can make a point, <laughs> who knows? Can I? <laughs> <Boop>. <laughs> Visual jokes yeah. for the podcast. Um, <laughs> and if you came to podcast night, you would have gotten the joke. <laughs> You also would have been told that a cookie was more important than you, so. <laughs> oh, you know, that is fair. <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, the, the, the voice work is excellent, and they... Yeah. The only one that we don't admit exists is uh, Vic Mignona. I, I cannot say his last name. Mignogna. Mignogna. Yeah. The guy. The fucking pedophile. Yeah. He plays Edward Elric. He has that voice. Everyone recognizes that yep. voice. That's why he got cast as it. Like, it's not that great. He's not that good. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, and he's a creep and he's a pedophile. Yeah. And, um... He can rot you in know, hell. If you ever... But I'm yeah. not gonna let that affect how much I love the... <laughs> but still, the voice cast is fantastic. He's the only one that I'm just like... Yeah. Can um, take or leave. But also, um... I love I love the art. It, it is oh, um, honestly one of the most intricate. Um, like you know how so so traditionally in in animated things and especially like in anime they have their like sets. There are yeah. ways so that they can make it quicker. But because time wasn't a factor for this, because this was a, a long awaited thing, they made us. Yeah. They drew it the fuck out. Um, yeah, it's 64 episodes, um, yeah. if I remember correctly. Yes, I believe that's true. Um, but, like, it, it's every single frame is, 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 there's no reused frames, really. It's, it is yeah. all beautiful and, like, lovingly the, done. The detail. Honestly, and I think the of, details that they keep from episode to episode, I think is something that's fantastic because a lot of modern anime has a lot of, they're trying to get it out so fast yeah. that they end up with some not great animation. These, but watching this one as it was coming out, it was this, like, all of the, you could see the time spent it was a, into doing yeah. it and into making sure that from each episode, in one episode, Ed gets a, a head wound. Yeah. In the next one, he's wearing a bandage. In the next one, again, he's wearing another bandage. A little later, he still has a scar. And then that scar gets hit yeah. open in another episode. And it's the same detail throughout, like, it's like 12 episodes. We literally watch, uh, like, if you're just watching it all the way through, you, you don't factor it in. But, like, you see Ed growing physically. Yeah. They do such a good job. Muscle. Because it grows. takes place in over a year. It takes place over a, a year. And, or Long it's like maybe year. nine months or yeah. something like that. <laughs> but it, uh, well, I mean, from the start of the anime, not from like the start of the story. Yeah. But. <laughs> we do see that like, jump you watch from. him go oh, from. Hi. Yeah, he's 15 and then turns 16. And in that time, he goes from a very scrawny little guy with a bunch of muscle definition for no reason but whatever and then as by the end of the series he is looking like an adult almost yeah and then at the very end of the series he does he's a full adult and it's a difference and i think that's great yeah that they actually can do that and they do the same thing with winry which who we haven't talked about at all which is we really haven't talked upsetting about be- yeah we haven't gotten into the characters because <laughs> so this <laughs> That was going to be next because I was. Yeah. I, that's how I was hearing it. I I, I yes. did it specifically. I was going to address before we got to the character. No, we'll save that. Okay, characters. They're all so great. Like all of them are fantastic. All of them are so unique and um. Well, okay, I'm not going to say they're all unique, but e- even the ones that are similar to one another have their own quirks. Yeah, I adore they, them. <sighs> It's all so fantastic because it does a really good job of fleshing out even small characters. Um, and I think that's fantastic. So the main cast, Ed and Al, Elric, they live with their, um, uh, well, I mean, they don't live with anyone. They were living with their neighbor's grandma. <laughs> they are so their neighbor orphans. Winry. They are <laughs> they, orphans who roam the countryside. <laughs> they are, in fact. Um, they do not have a home, but they were. They burned it down. With- 
they did in fact do that. Um, but they were living with their neighbor, Winry's grandma, Pinaco. Um, Winry has been their best friend, uh, both of them, for their entire lives. She's the same age as Ed. Um, and so she's really close with both Ed and Al. Yeah. Uh, she is an auto ma- auto male engineer. So she is a wrench wench. She's a gearhead. She comes by it naturally because um, uh, her grandma does. Yeah. So her they, grandma they does run a business together. Yep. Rockbell Auto Mail. Rockbell yep. Auto Mail. And um, and her parents were doctors, so it really does just like. And, and all... so essentially, part of her relationship with um, Ed is that she is his auto mail mechanic. He. Doesn't yeah. really let other people do it unless there's like a massive emergency. But because even then, hers is also you ever. Automail is an art in this world. It is an yeah. art as much as it is a mechanic. It, it's it's fucking. Oh, yeah, I love the automail. It's fantastic. It's so good. Um, but they then uh, are working at the with the military at an owl. They. Um, and with working with them, they have uh, Colonel Mustang, Colonel Roy Mustang, and Colonel um, Roy Mustang, <laughs> and Lieutenant Hawkeye, um, Reza Lisa Hawkeye. Hawkeye. I'm, I'm just saying, but um, they uh, are kind of Ed's boss. Roy is kind of his boss. Yeah, basically, basically. he's he's his um, most direct superior, and. Roy is in, he's also a state alchemist. He is the flame alchemist. He can create fire. Fire alchemy is like this really rare thing. And he learned it from Riza's uh, dad. It's br- basically, that's, that's all you got to know about that. It's really cool. <laughs> it's great. Uh, that is a, a cool thing that we, you will find is uh, al- state alchemists all have yeah. a thing. So uh, yeah, they full do. metal alchemist is because... It's his title. It, that is that is his title. That is uh, Ed's title. Um, he is the Full Metal Alchemist. There's also there's a, a flame. There's the Flame Alchemist. There's an Ice Alchemist. There's Scarlet Al- Alchemist. Mm-hmm. Strong Arm Alchemist. <laughs> who we will talk about in a moment. We will absolutely talk about the Strong Arm. <laughs> yes, but no, yeah. So it's they get like a title, which is super rad and like very nightly <laughs> yeah um, so it's i wish that was still have common practice you know the military like the the hmm, the government in amestris is there is a fuhrer <laughs> which obviously it's it's a military dictatorship yes. Um, so it's Fuhrer King Bradley. His name, His is, name king. is King. It's it's not that he's Fuhrer King, which is what I thought for so long. So long. <laughs> His name is just King Bradley, so he's the Fuhrer. Um, and then it goes down from there, and it's a very, it's a very bureaucratic structure. <laughs> so, yeah, it's a whole thing. Yeah, so you in will the- get plenty of... And that is a thing. Like, they give us insight into the politics and uh, yeah. the geopolitical structure without I, it getting, like... I. It's not the prequels. Yeah. It's not the Star Wars prequels. <laughs> exactly. It's like we understand through being shown how it works. It's not just like, I'm going to talk about... Yeah. I'm just going to... Let's talk about trade routes. routes. <laughs> Exposition dump. Spice trade. <laughs> But yeah, so yeah, it's nice. Definitely. It's practical. Yeah, it's fantastic watching it all play out. It's actually one of the things that I love the most about it is that it's a. It's also just a political drama. Yeah, it's it's, a it's shonen, but it's also it's a political it's, thriller. It's it is it it really is. While also kind of being a fantasy. Yeah, it's def it's like fantasy. Sci-fi? It's not sci-fi. There's like that's that's act that's that's fantasy, you know. Okay. The lo- alchemy itself. If it was just the auto mail, I'd say it's sci-fi. It's almost steampunk, honestly. Like it's that kind of weird like time. But um the entire structure of, of the government is fa- fascinating, it really. really. Is. Um so it's it's Fuhrer Bradley at the top. Um 
And then there's a bunch of generals and uh, stuff. No, we don't want to explain it because it's, you experience yeah, it through the Yeah, very form. true. You do, you do. When it becomes uh, necessary, we know a lot of they characters <laughs> In that military structure, Fuhrer King Bradley is a very big character. He's like the best at everything, basically. <laughs> he is, he just is awesome and kind of sexy for an old man. Yeah, he's 60. Um, so then we also have... Uh, but he's also... Immediate circle basically mm-hmm. of um hawkeye uh, oh my god i just lost the other three's names <laughs> well there's jean or jean yeah there's jean um um tiny guy big uh, guy um <laughs> fury um and then there's the one that gets you know <laughs> i don't want to ruin things you know um i can't and then the one that stays with you know B- b- the one b- that gets b- sent b- to you b- know but b- i don't remember barada i'm going with barada right yeah. now <laughs> sounds fine <laughs> sounds fine um solid because why not but um uh, that's his like personal like group are those like four yeah and then outside of that you also have um Major you know Armstrong, let's, let's, let's the strong arm. Let's talk about our favorite characters. How about we just talk about our favorite characters? I guess there's a lot of characters. Okay, so my I'm favorite. Edit this I down. already. I, I mean, I mean. Okay, I was Major Armstrong. Major Armstrong is is fantastic. His name is Alex him. Armstrong. He is um, very large and buff, and also sensitive and- man who just is. He does art. And he never wears a shirt. He cries openly and... Yeah, it's fantastic. Like, people don't care that he's doing it. They they just care that he makes them a part of it. He's very yeah. extra. He is. And like, then we also meet his sister. I won't say too much about her, but she is, like, she's the one best of my character. top two favorite. When we were talking about how beautifully they designed things, all I could think of was her lips and her hair. Exactly. And so her Olivier. eyes. Armstrong is fantastic. She is the um, yep. Actually, she he only has queen. sisters. That is a thing. Um, yeah, he only has sisters. He's yeah. the only boy, and uh, but uh, most of his sisters look like him. Yeah, they look super buff. The Armstrong gene he has two, is strong. He has two super buff sisters and two not buff sisters. One of them's the youngest, and then Olivier is the oldest, and she's a general. And that's what I'll say about her. But she is the best. Well, she's a boss no, ass bitch. the best. No, yeah. The best is Izumi Curtis. Izumi Curtis um, is the best. Is teacher. teacher. Uh, so she is the alchemist who taught, uh, you know, took Ed and Al in against her will uh, when they were six and seven, I think, <laughs> or seven and eight when yeah. their mom died. Yeah. Uh, and she taught them alchemy. Mm-hmm. Um, but she's just a housewife. When so people she ask ever... what I... <laughs> yeah. She goes around in like house slippers. Um, house basically. slippers, a little she, house coat. Um, it's fantastic, but, her, her but she's lightly buffed arms. Uh, shown. Yeah, and she's like the best alchemist. But she doesn't work for the government because. And every time anyone's like, "Oh, are you thinking about you could?" She's like, "Oh, I'm just a housewife. I can't do that." And that's just her, like, a very tongue in cheek. Oh my god, I love yeah. Zumi. Um. But also, it's, uh, she, that is a great, she is so disappointed that her boys joined the military. She sure is. She does not approve of the fact that Ed is now a dog for the military. Yes. Huh. One of the military dogs. Yep. She, yeah. So she's fantastic and she has this husband who is, uh, he is big and he's also buff, but he's got a little chub on him. He's fantastic. Sig is the best Sig man. Sig is the best. <laughs> like, when Sig and and Major Armstrong, Major Armstrong. are in a room together, uh, it's magical. The, it's just the sparkles. The sparkles. The sparkles. And they're so complimentary. Um, they, they just, they literally they love just each other. one like, another. Like, they're like bros immediately. They're like, you are beautiful. No, you are beautiful, my brother. 
It's fantastic. It is the I best relationship them. in the entire show. Even between like him and Izumi, like that's rock solid. Very good. But it's the beautiful. best relationship. <laughs> how did you? The best thing is how did you meet? How did you meet Sig Izumi? Oh well, I dropped a bear, and that is that is legit how they met. <laughs> In, it's in the it's in the manga. It's hilarious. It's, it's fucking so hilarious. Rad. But um, right. So Izumi's the best, uh, and we get a lot out of her. She is super involved in like the deep story of it all. God, but damn, is she? I do want to say that I don't. Nope. Yeah, we can't. No, nope, I won't do it. I won't continue. It, just know that it, it's very, like, gosh. She is a complex character. She is yes. beautiful. She is heartbreaking. She is exactly. integral to this fucking and story. The one thing I will say is that she's very, very, like, relatable for us in the way that she's a woman. She's disabled. Mm-hmm. Um, her, like, basically part of her insides just aren't there anymore. Yeah. Um, and she just constantly... Throughout the entire thing, she overdoes herself, and it makes her like vomit blood. Because she's um, real angry, and 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 anytime hits she's doing anything like too much of the alchemy and stuff like that, yeah. any kind of fighting, it takes it out of her, and she still pushes through. And her husband's very doting on her. Is like, yeah. Izumi, you're doing too much, and she's like, I'm not doing too much. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like for part of the show, she's bed bound. Yeah. So it's something that's like. I, I really connect with Izumi, Absolutely. and also I'm that kind of teacher. I'm not that kind of teacher, but I am that kind of teacher. <laughs> I've seen you I don't, children. I, I don't send them to survive on their own on an island for a month. They'll be fine. <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah. Any other characters you really want to talk about? Um... I kind of want to talk about Hohenheim, but I can't. I know, really you talk can't about talk about Hohenheim. Most of them you can't I, talk about. We can say a little, okay. There are so many characters that are, are so important, so you can't talk about them because their very existence is important. Yeah. Hohenheim is their dad, though, and he left their family before their mom died. Before their mom and died of anime mom disease. Anime mom disease. I mean, she had a side ponytail. It was always coming. Um, but she she dies... When they are, so Hohenheim left when they were four and five or three and four? Three and four. I think it's three and four. Um, So he left when they were three and four. They can remember him um, enough. And their mom died when they were five and six or six and seven. I can't remember. One of those two. Um, So they then lived with Pinaco. But Hohenheim is a very, very interesting character. I don't know if I say I like him, but he's a very, complex very interesting character. <laughs> Super complex and like fascinating to me. Like so fucking fascinating. I'm just guys. It's, this it's, show is. I would read an entire art. novel. Why are you listening to us talk about it? To so go watch <laughs> it. It's so fucking it, good. And then it really is. I'll get to what I was saving because I don't know that I can yeah. talk about any of the other characters. Honestly, no, no. It's yeah. too packed, and they're also yeah. complex. God, I um, wish I could talk about Envy without talking about oh, no. Envy. <gasps> oh, Envy's the best. Okay. Um, but, Honestly. Oh, so fucking complex. <laughs> Ugh. Um, there are so many fascinating characters in this show. But Continue. I, 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 my words were going to be like, from start to finish, it's a piece of art. And then I was going to go on to, um, in fact... From start to finish, literally, the uh, beginning and end credits are of, of this show oh, are my God, favorite of any gorgeous. anime. The the the, the hmm. it's just the combination of the music they choose and how dynamic they make the opening. The only other openings that I think really match this level of opening is Mob Psycho it 100. Is, it is some beautiful visual storytelling. It's yeah, it's it's gorgeous. It is an art. And there is a specific one that I will watch the the intro, the first intro. I think you know the, one with the like the wind and everything. Mm-hmm. That one. That's is the that one. the let it all out? No, that's later. Yeah, not let it all out. 
Let it all out. And then she starts singing in Japanese, that's, so I don't know what yeah, she's saying. No, that is, that's the ending. That I, I do watch that one sometimes. Yeah. With Winry. That's the one with Winry, right? And the little oh, but you think the, 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 the one that the wind that's pulling them, the yeah, winds that's of the fate. One I'm talking about yes, it is so and it, good. Oh, and that that and like just the that is the first intro for the series, and it shows so much that we don't fully understand until like almost the end of the series. It shows things that are, like, gorgeous and you don't know what it is or why it's happening. And then it makes sense later. And it's just like, like what <gasps> the fuck? Yeah. They, so They told us from the start. <laughs> yeah. Basically. Some good shit. Um, yeah. And, like, it's just, it's just a super interesting plot. I can't even, I was going to try and talk about some episodes that I liked, but I really just can't. Because I don't want to spoil anything for you. And then I want this you one go... where this person dies and this person... Yeah, I mean, there are some things you guys have probably been spoiled on already, but I hope you haven't been. Because... Because they this is hurt something so where bad. I am not someone who is, like, pro-spoiler alert all the time. Mm-hmm. Like, some, I don't care if someone spoils me on things for the most part. But this show is one thing... Where I feel like if I had been spoiled, I would have been, like, I would not have been as heartbroken yeah. as I was in things. I would not have been, like, there's something about this that is not, it's not like, oh, it needs to shock you so that you no. feel it. It's more like, it is more satisfying for you as the watcher to slowly understand what's going on. Yes. To slowly figure out what is happening at this moment. That is, it, it's just so satisfying as the watcher to be able really to do that is. and not and, have it ruined. And then, honestly, the rewatchability of this show, because you yeah. go back and suddenly it, it is, it's just. And then there are honestly, things. I, I am going to continue. I will always compare it to um, uh, a, the A Song of Ice and Fire series um, mm-hmm. because. It, it is absolutely, you go back and it's like, oh my God, that was seeded from the start. You're like, yeah. oh my God, that's what that fucking, this is what was happening here. This is what we didn't know. This, it's, it is always, it's revelatory and I love it. It is. It's, it's so good. I'm, yeah. So that's what we want to tell you guys right now. Go watch Watch the Full Alchemist Brotherhood. It's on apparently Hulu and Netflix. We found so. that out. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Go watch it. It was free for a while on Funimation's website too, so I don't know if that's yeah. still true. But it is literally, I would say, in my top two animes of all time. Yeah. I think it's that and um, Mob Psycho 100 are like my two. I haven't that I think seen are just that, like, but I, I love Attack <gasps> on Titan. Sister. You have to watch Mob Psycho 100. You would absolutely love it. Okay. So. All right. Okay. I, it's just, it's exactly your kind of humor. <laughs> so, sorry, I got really into that. <laughs> Apparently I'm going to be like, okay, watch it and then we'll talk about it next time. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> no, but it's 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 very good. But I would say for like all time, Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood is just... That if someone's like, where should I start with anime? Well, Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. Yeah, absolutely. Because it, 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 honestly, 100%. it's the most tangible story. Because I so think, much of anime yeah. gets very metaphysical. It gets very, like, magic. <laughs> As if this one doesn't get metaphysical? Well, Ariana. I mean, it does, but in a structural way. Like, yeah. it's not, and then we use our energy beams to fight the, <laughs> it's like, where did this come from? What is happening? Yeah. I love it. Don't get me wrong. I love me a good sailor fucking moon. Like, yeah. but at the, the same AG. time, I, I understand. We're 100% going to talk about Sailor Moon at oh, some point, so by the way, guys. We are so about Sailor Moon. Like, if you think we're not, you are higher than me. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. It has, I think it has parallels to real world without being too close to real world. To make it really good. Yeah. So it's not like it's trying to be, yes, this is Germany, World War I. Uh, it's not. No. It's just, 
it's taking some parallels. Yeah, it's um, basically like, okay, let's say that they progressed but, in, in yeah. alchemy at the same rate that we progressed in science. So they're, how does that affect their geopolitical landscape? Structure. Like I said, it's fucking crazy. The, the yeah. fuck- <laughs> um, The only thing, I will warn people that in this show there is child death. Yes. There is uh, genocide, which is, the genocide is heavily um, condemned, for one thing. Yes. It is heavily condemned, and it is, um, like, war of extermination kind of a thing. So if these are triggering topics to you, then this is your warning to kind of, if you need to tap out, tap out. Because those are heavy themes there. There's also... um, parent death and obviously we've already talked that their mom died and um what's the main other thing oh everyone's everyone's parents die what the fuck are you talking about what show um, are you talking about that what show have you been talking about for the last 41 minutes because i've been talking about full metal alchemist brotherhood primarily yeah um i think those are the major there's also a lot of blood so much Um, blood but not like gore no yeah exactly they they Um, use like sheeted blood to they do a lot of just like everything else is black and white and then i was gonna say what we want you to understand is red right it's not like graphic yeah it's not like i don't know if that's not your thing sherlock holmes versus jack the ripper (laughs) yeah that was bad that was traumatic that was yeah so yeah that's that's full metal alchemist Watch it unless any of those things I just m- mentioned trigger you. And then uh, there's also gun violence. Guns yeah. exist in this world um, and our- because not everyone has alchemy, so they have guns. <laughs> and one of our main character, or one of our Riza Hawkeye, yeah. is a uh, obviously a sniper. <laughs> yeah. Oh no, that's literally just her last name as well. <laughs> but she's because, also a sniper. Uh, we have- we have Hawkeye, the sniper, and we also have Alex Armstrong, the strong arm alchemist. Fantastic. It is, Love it. It is brilliant. Uh, the naming uh, in this show is, is, is great, actually. Yeah. yeah. Oh, also, like, religion is a heavy, but it's not Christianity. Yeah. It, so it's not, like, it, it's, but it's very much it's, religion is heavily centered. Yeah. And I, the main character... Wants to fight God despite being an atheist and having already fought God. Like, well, he sees and I say atheism. this to you, and it means nothing to you, and that's perfect. He's more like an agnostic. He sees well, no, yeah, he sees atheism as an active choice. It's it's not about God not existing. <laughs> it's about. But I don't fucking believe in you. He's he's an atheist, and <laughs> then it's like, no, you know what? I don't believe in you. And that's all that matters. I'm going to keep going on on my path and going to push you out of the way. That is his attitude. It's like, there's a God and he's a bastard. I believe he <laughs> exactly. says that at one point. Pretty much. He pretty much says that. There, There's a lot um, of, of atheistic monologues. <laughs> it's fan. He is, he is an edgy atheist. But also, like, right in what he's talking about instead of the ones on the internet. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know. But, yeah. So that's Full Metal Alchemist. If I talk any more about it, yeah. I will just spoil you guys. For so sure. go watch it, please. And then tell us what you think about it on our Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Twitch, YouTube, and our fancy website, curlmeistersisters.knifefightclub.com. Or you can email us, because the only person I get emails at, at curlmeistersisters at gmail.com, is, like, spam. <laughs> and my phone will buzz, and I'll be like, <gasps> and then it'll just be like, we can get you more offers. And I'm like, I don't know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> you should watch Soil Entertainment. Uh, she, she does bits on... Um, <laughs> Uh, like the offers she gets from like sponsors and shit, and 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 it's just like, okay, well, this is a scam. <laughs> and it's 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 wonderful. I think you'd appreciate it anyway. But you could also head on over to <laughs> you or fuck, you could find us on um. Uh, you were just gonna send them to unlocked <laughs> Apple Podcast, Google Podcast, and Spotify. 
Spotify <laughs> and in those places you can be like what the fuck did they just spend 45 fucking minutes talking about an amazing anime go watch it <laughs> You can subscribe to us on Twitch to get access to our cute little wine glass emote, our Scopa emote, and at Tier 2, our Peace Out emote. You can also get Podcast Night VODs. Or you can support us over on Patreon.com slash Crowmeister Sisters. I remember what I'm saying. Totally. Yeah. Uh, to get access to StreamCat pictures, ones that don't go up on her official inst- Instagram, which is StreamCatK, by the way. Just... <laughs> All one word, stream cat K. Um, (laughs) Just the letter, if you wanted to follow, you know. But they get exclusive ones over on Patreon that don't go up on the Instagram. So if that's important to you. Also, you get podcast night VODs. And uh, you can tell us what to talk about or become a sim in my latest Let's Play. Because why not? (laughs) So, as a reminder, I'm Marisa. I'm Ariana. We're the Crowmeister Sisters, and we're asking you guys to stay sleuthy. <laughs>